And now, insurance-minded speeches from GEICO. It's a common expression, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. However, what if the horse's mouth is filled with useful insurance tools? This is the exact case with the GEICO app. Yes, the app is free and therefore a gift horse. However, look inside the app and behold, emergency roadside assistance, digital ID cards, bill pay. Get the GEICO app, look it in the mouth, get amazing services. Thank you. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Within the Chaos with your host, Rodney Shortridge, and co-host, Robin Dalton. Good evening, boys and girls. <laughs> Jam, it's been a long damn day. Oh, God. Uh, so I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. You can listen in by going to Blog Talk dot com with the forward slash within chaos or call in listen in uh to ask any questions to our guest tonight at three two three eight seven zero four one nine seven from deep within the heart of the Appalachian Mountains and I do mean deep damn. I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you for listening to Within the Chaos. My name is Rodney Shortridge. I'll be your host tonight, along with my fiery redhead co-host, Robin Dog. Hey, y'all. I was getting ready to say I don't have a co-host. <laughs> <laughs> tonight, our special guest is the beautiful, hot, and steamy Holly Mullins. Holly is a member. Uh, oh, shit, a member. Sorry. I told you all <laughs> it has been a long damn day. Uh, Holly uh, has a number of um, uh, metaphysical gifts and talents. 
She she is an energy worker, spiritual counselor, paranormal investigator, radio host, and professional model. Jesus, when does this girl have time to sleep? A uh, couple announcements to everyone. BDPS or Within the Chaos will be at this year's Sci-Fi Convention on October 22nd, located at the Bluefield State College in Bluefield, West Virginia. Uh, we'll be there from 9 to 3 or 4. Um, also, uh, learn more ghosts and other paranormal phenomenon at the Tazewell County Library on Thursday, October 27th at 7 p.m. As Black Diamond Paranormal Society talks about some of their top paranormal investigations. Uh, this is free and open to the public. Uh, bring your questions, and there will be light refreshments uh, provided. So, whew, Robin, how was your week? Well, busy as usual, but I'm hanging in there, and I'm excited for this weekend. Lots going on, and can't wait to see everybody over at Bluefield State, and have a great evening with my buddies. Oh, always. Bluefield State has always been great to us. I mean, Jerry Connor, uh, he's a uh, uh, honorary member of Black Diamond, and uh, he invited us. Gosh, what, back six, seven years ago or something like that? We've been doing it a long time. And we've met some really great people, and we've met some really strange people. (laughs) And we've met some really big douchebags, but not many. (laughs) (laughs) I guess there's enough of us flapping our damn jaws. Uh well, it's my honor to welcome our special guest, Holly Mullins. Hello, Holly, and thank you for joining us tonight. And I hope that number that is on there, that is you. <laughs> well, I hope it is, too. How are you guys? I'm, We're good, I'm, girl. I'm just piss-ass tired. <laughs> I hear you. I mean, I, I got up at 3.30 this morning and went to work at 4 o'clock and didn't get back here to the house until about 6.30. And I laid down and took a nap before I started anything to die. <laughs> oh, damn. I couldn't blame you a bit. That's a little pooter. So, Holly, tell us about yourself, girl. Tell us all about what makes Holly, Holly. <laughs> oh, God. What makes me, me? I guess that's just me. Um, well, like you said, I'm a paranormal investigator. I am an energy worker slash intuitive healer. Uh, I do modeling. I do have my radio show and radio uh, network here. And, oh, my God, like, there's so many other things that I love to do. I love it when people just top it off like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, me. what began your journey into the paranormal, my beautiful Holly? Oh, man. Um, well, what started me into my journey of the paranormal would have to be my out-of-body experiences. Um, the t- When I started having them was probably about um, 2000. Hmm, I might be do, do better in years. It's been 10 plus years, I know, um, since I started having these experiences. But um, what happened was, uh, before I started having these experiences, I was under the assumption of um, I was a muggle and I would never have any kind of experiences at all. And if I did, it was just going to be like the highlight of my life, you know. Um, I started having out-of-body experiences, which is also called astral projection or astral traveling. Um, it's where your physical body is asleep, but your astral or soul body is outside of your body and having these experiences. So what happened was um, it started with slight things like uh, hearing someone call my name, um, hearing the radio station uh, on. It was like an AM kind of thing. Um, I guess you could call it like a white noise kind, but not. So I would get up and I would see where these noises come from. Whenever I heard my name being called, I would wake everybody up in the house and question them, why are you hollering at me? And, you know, it would do that like – Knots and knots in a row uh, I would see lots in each corner of my room It would almost like I'd follow them with my eyes 
And when they'd stop, it, I called it bed shaking at the time because I didn't know what the hell was going on. But come to find out, it's actually body vibrations, which what happens to your body when you're settling and going into that dream state or the state before out of body. Um, so that was really what struck my interest. In at the time, I didn't think it was paranormal. I just, I don't know what I thought. Um, you know, it reached a breaking point for me. Uh, to make me dive into research to understand what was going on with me because uh, I actually woke up in the middle of the night and I saw a figure, my first full figure ever that I've ever seen um, walking toward me. Uh, But it was not human. It was like a green goblin man. It was like humanoid slash green man. It was weird as shit. So me not being religious at all, I'm spiritual. Um, I was like, holy shit, I might want to grab my Bible that gave me my senior year. That that might come in handy because I had no idea at that time what was going on. Um, you know, seeing something like that, it, it was definitely something to shake you up. Um, I was on the verge of actually calling in a paranormal team in South Carolina because that's where I lived at the time. Uh, but I didn't. I ended up finding a few articles online that I related to and what was going on with me. So that was that. And in 2009, 2010, um, I thought, you know what? I've done all this research into the paranormal. I want to help other people. Like, I've I've felt the calling of helping other people. So um, me and Gary Ellen Adams, which is the co-founder of Black Mountain Paranormal Society, started up Black Mountain Paranormal Society here in southwest Virginia. And um, with that... It's almost like I separated my experiences with what I was doing and investigating because, again, I didn't see that it kind of fit together. But I would find out later on it definitely would. Um, Investigating in the paranormal, everybody knows you could come in purely skeptic um, and, and do it for years and you realize that you start to open up psychically. Uh, For me, personally, I believe that everybody is born psychic. Um, That's why we have so many kids that experience and see things um, rather than adults, because we are all born that open. Um, Things in our life kind of shuts that out for us. Some of us can, some of us can't. Um, For me, you know, I tell everybody when I was younger, I don't remember a lot of my childhood, so I could have had experiences and not remembered them. I'm not going to say I did because I don't remember it. Um, I remember through my teenage years having experiences here and there. But ultimately, um, yeah, like I've been investigating for six years. Uh, about three, four years ago, I started exploring the psychic side of myself. So once I started meditation and stuff like that, I started opening up fully, which come my healing abilities, hot hands, holly. <laughs> That's what they call me. It's my porn name, guys. Um, no, they call me Hot Hands Holly because if you're familiar with healers, um, that's where they channel and they put their energy out is their hands, and their hands tend to get extremely hot. Now, mind you, I was like, I was mind dead set on I'm not working with the living. Okay, I have enough of living people. I'm working with the dead. Uh, well, here I am, you know. 2016, I'm working with the living, damn it. <laughs> so here I am. <laughs> damn. So I, I, I guess you would say that the paranormal was that that was the first passion that led you to all these other adventures, right? Absolutely. My personal my personal experiences, um, I think has helped me so much in this field. Um, you know, coming in about six years ago, um, I feel like I had a little bit of leadway on everybody, but I didn't because there's so much to learn once you get into the field. Um, there is the paranormal, and then there is the paranormal. <laughs> is what I tell everybody. I'm like, you see the you see the front page of it. You see the paranormal, the ghosts, the you know residual and intelligent hauntings, and you don't see past that. But there's so much more to it. Oh yeah. What's your favorite thing? What was that, Robin? What's your favorite thing about the paranormal? Um, My favorite thing about the paranormal is probably 
uh, validation for me personally. I love being able to help people, but I love the validation for myself. Uh, being able to go into a location, maybe, you know, having picking up on information before even entering this home or business location, wherever it may be, and then going in and blindly and picking up stuff that – uh, coincides with what's going on in the home and stuff. But my like the biggest thing is I have I have to say is helping people because the majority of what BMPS does is uh, resi- um, sorry residential cases. Right, I have to agree. I love that part too. <laughs> yeah. So, what is the most exciting thing you've ever encountered during an investigation? Oh, man. I was just actually on another show, and I was talking about this, and this is something that actually scared the shit out of me, believe it or not. Uh, Out of all the things that I've encountered, I feel like it's kind of uh, got me ready for the paranormal field, so I'm not really – I don't get scared very easily. I'm not – when someone says there's a negative entity around, I'm like, okay, I'm head first. I'm going in. I don't – you know, I got this Um, because as a healer, uh, because of what I do – they usually tend to uh, back away from me and not come around me. But, um, oh, my gosh, I, we was at St. Albans. Uh, I think it was April or May, May, June, something like that. Anyway, um, there was an event going on that whole weekend, um, and it was a Friday night, and it was uh, just – St. Albans was only open for a private investigation for the people who were part of the event. So um, we was in isolation at St. Albans, and we was doing a scrying session with the mirrors. And um, now scrying, um, of course, is different things. You can scry with tea leaves. You can scry with um, a pendulum. You can scry with all kinds of things. Um, Our thing was the blacked-out mirrors, and um, we had the uh, shoot – got to slip my mind <sighs> anyway we had the light we had the flicker and light um so we did that those four girls we had our backs face to each other and i have add like oh my god crazy so it's hard for me to concentrate and sit still um so i was sitting there went through all three of the mirrors because we switch it up all the girls were seeing things i wasn't seeing shit although i was feeling energy i wasn't seeing anything because it was hard for me to concentrate but on the last mirror i actually saw a, a set of like eyes which looked to me like male like you could see like the top of his face and his eyes in the mirror that didn't freak me out um he grabbed my inner thigh. That didn't freak me out. <laughs> Just told everybody. But what freaked me out was this. Um, I left that night, went back to uh, my friend's house to stay. I was in his guest room. I was, I think it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. I was on Facebook on my phone, just like catching up throughout the day and stuff like that. And was laying there, and all of a sudden, this man, who sounds like he is in the room. Now, mind you, yes, I was at a male friend's house. He was in his room across the house in his bedroom. But um, my door was shut to this bedroom, and I hear a man say, hi. And as plain as day, like I said it to you guys, that's how I heard it, like in my room right beside my bed. So my first instinct as an investigator is to get up and look around and see where the hell the noise is coming from. Well, obviously there was no one in the room with me. So I went to go open the door to make sure nobody was there. And if someone ran off, I wasn't going to be able to hear them because it's all hardwood floor. Um, so, my again, my first instinct is to go look around the house and see where the hell it was coming from. So I go to Ken, which was uh, his house. I went to his door. I banged on the door. And I said, Ken, I said, do you have spirits in your house? He said, yeah. I said, well, do you have a male here? Because I just, you know, somebody just told me hi. He said, well, they come and go. He laughed it off. He thought it was hilarious. Um, You know, I I just said, I'm just going to let you know. I'm just trying to make sure it wasn't you, which I knew it wasn't him. But that was my part of my skepticism that I was trying to okay now this I really did hear that um so anyway I went back to the bedroom and he's got this big fat white cat he calls short bus (laughs) and I get to the door and I shut the bedroom door and that cat goes like oh yeah okay you just saw this so the cat you know what that means the cat just saw that spirit so I shut the door And instead of me laying back down and cutting the light back out, I left my light on, and I get in bed. I'm like, screw that shit. So I'm on Facebook, and five (laughs) minutes later, my my other inner thigh got grabbed, and I knew right that moment that 
someone had followed me back from St. Albans. So it was this horny ass male apparently. So I did send him back to St. Albans. I didn't have no problems for the rest of the day. And that's the first time in six years that I've had anything follow me back from a location like that. And of course it wasn't anything bad. He was a horny ass spirit apparently. But it was like, it was creepy because whenever I communicate with spirits, it's all telepathically in my head or if I hear them, it's faintly off. It's not like so aggressive and in my room, like someone was saying hi to me. So that was, that was a big thing that I'll always remember. And some of the other experiences that I've had in or outside the field is probably some of the most prominent that stand out to me. All right. Wow. So you got hot hands and cold hands. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, are there any people in your life that influenced, you know, your decision uh, to become such a huge part of the paranormal field? And you know, there hasn't been, not in my life, like family-wise, Um because, you know, we are in the Bible Belt. Um, I will tell well, I can't say that completely because as a child growing up and stuff, my grandmother told us ghost stories. Um, so that kind of kept my mind open. But I always felt like, you know, I was drawn to magic, the magical side of everything. Um, I remember, you know, being a teenager and stuff and having sleepovers and you're always doing a lot of feather, a lot of the feather stiff as a board. And, you know, just yep. with friends, friends discussing that energy and the magic part of the Wicca side of things. Although I, didn't, I don't follow a path and that's, I guess I stumble some people and get them confused because, um, I do some of the things that I do uh, personally is some of the paths that I follow and, and incorporate on my spiritual path um, could be seen as Wiccan, pagan, or even Native American uh, spirituality. Robin, you're up. <laughs> Wake up, girl. <laughs> I like, thank you. I guarantee you, Holly. I can tell you what she is. She's sitting in the bed, all snugged up, sitting there with her with her phone, looking at it and, and doing this. And Jared, uh, um, actually, actually, Mr. Rodney, it was actually yours, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, she already answered that question. <laughs> so, would you prefer to investigate residential or commercial properties? I absolutely prefer doing residential cases, but let me tell you this. I like doing public places, don't get me wrong, uh, but I love going to locations where no one's ever investigated. And I guess that's why I like going to doing these residential cases. Um, residential cases are really tricky, and a lot of paranormal investigators will not do them because they're not comfortable with it. And I applaud them for that because there's a lot of jackasses out here that's going to go do residential cases when they don't know what the hell they're doing. Right. I think that's the truth. Well, it- have you ever heard, since we're talking about experiences and stuff, have you had anything other than uh, uh, spiritual type uh, experiences, maybe like cryptozoology or UFO encounters? Oh my God, I wished. I wished. Um, I want to be probed so, so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that no, but- can be arranged. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I have always had a fascination with UFOs and cryptos, especially Bigfoot. Um, now, you know, uh, you're in the Appalachian Mountains. I'm in the Appalachian Mountains. I'm in the ass end, ass, ass end of the Appalachian, you know, in, in, in Virginia. So, um, you know, we do have Bigfoot spot, you know, spottings here. Um, my uncle actually saw one maybe 10 minutes away from where I live currently up on a um, road, back road up on a mountain. It's called Fox Gap. Um, and he is one of the, he saw it in the eighties and this is when they was trucking a lot in that area, but he is not one of the men who will make up shit just to scare you. I mean, he just scares me just looking at him. I just, he's just one of these junkyard type of men. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so he had his spotting there. And of course we have high knob, which, uh, finding Bigfoot was in here about four or five years ago, I think. Maybe not even that, and um, but they call it the wood booger apparently. I didn't get that because uh, the urban term for that is dried up jizz. But hey, <laughs> <laughs> and, 
<laughs> it wow. is. That so, is. you know, people, they have their T-shirts and they have their restaurant. And I'm just wondering, I, I'm tempted to go to that restaurant and ask them, hey, do you got wood booger jizz? Yeah, no <laughs> do you put a little bit yeah, of wood booger on there? Yeah, do you have wood booger sauce that I can put on my French fries? <laughs> right. Right. I just don't yeah. understand that. But hey. I don't, hey. <laughs> well, speaking of family, how supportive is your family with what you do? Um, well, you know, uh, I guess they have to accept me the way I, you know, whatever. Um, you know, they know what I do. I mean, hell, I've been doing it for six years, so I'm pretty out there. I don't try to keep it from them what I do, and they're all over my Facebook, too. So, anyway, um, their big thing is, you know, don't let anything follow you home or anything. And then my, one of my mamas on my, well, my mama on my dad's side, she prays for my soul every Sunday, and that's okay. But, you know, I know I'm good. But, uh, you know, it's just that I think a lot of people – including like some of my family are you know it's it's very interesting to them but they don't really follow what I do um so oh well but I love what I do and the people who support me I mean some of my friends are more family to me than family so amen <laughs> yeah that's true yep well, you know, my kids' friends think I'm awesome, and my kids think I am. So, you know, I don't really worry about what the rest of them say. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. My kids are the same way. My kids' friends, I'll go into school, and they'll come up to me and say, hey, I think you need to come to my house. Um, I know for a long time it was funny because Jonah would come home, and he was, he's my youngest one. Even the oldest ones would come home and say, Mommy, I tell them who you are and what you do, but they don't believe me. They think I'm lying. And, you know, it's been years now, and they know me. They know who I am. And uh, so it's funny. It is. It's hilarious, some of them. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, there are some teams or individuals in the field that have inspired you? Um. I look up to Pat Bussard a lot. Um, she is an awesome lady. Um, I meet all kinds of awesome people. I, I call it my path more than anything because, don't get me wrong, I love the paranormal, but my paranormal path has kind of led me deeper on my spiritual path. Um and my spiritual path is where it's at. The metaphysics is where my heart lies. But I love the paranormal, and I'm never going to give that up. And, you know, I'm always going to be investigating and always, you know, helping people out on cases. And, of course, I have Black Mountain Paranormal Society, and that's never going anywhere. Exactly. Hey, how do you feel about paranormal groups today compared to when you started investigating the paranormal for yourself? Okay, well, you ready for this one? Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> when I first started in the paranormal field, I was very sheltered. There wasn't any groups around that I knew of. Um, it wasn't until I got into radio and that I was exposed to all these other teams. And then, of course, social media, you start getting exposed to everyone. And then you start attending events and stuff like that. And now I've got a better look on, you know, how paranormal teams are. Um, I think there's a way too many teams out there who are going through this uneducated. Not only that, they're in it for an adrenaline rush or for attention, and that's sad because I mean I could go through my Facebook right now and say, yeah, we attention seeker, and that's what a lot of them like to do because you know we have people who have. And it's true, mental disabilities, mental, they have a narcissism, they have all this shit going on, and they love attention and drama, and that's what the paranormal field is full of. Yep, you I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you 100% on that. Well, do you prefer so, old school? I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so the paranormal has become something else besides the paranormal. And, you know, um, even this past year and, and before, I was really just like standing back and saying, "What is this where I want to be? Because these are not the people that I want to be around. But then I had to, I, I went through a, a thing, you know, a phase where I just, I just kind of listened to myself and, and just listened to spirit and, 
Uh, the truth of it is, is the people, the good people out there in this field will be attracted to you if you're in it for the right reasons, if you're not working from ego. And, you know, when I say working from ego is working for the fame, the money, which is there's no fucking money involved. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, or just the celebrity status or how many followers you can get on Facebook. Uh, but that's how I view it anyway. Yeah, I agree with you 100% on that. Yeah, but. Well, do you prefer old school methods of investigating, or do you prefer the new technologies that a lot of groups are using today? I love the older technologies. I, you know what? Everybody asks, what's your favorite piece of equipment? What are you using in the field? I don't mind picking up a new piece of equipment and trying it out. I love it, like Thermcam. Give me that, baby. I'm going to try it out for a, for an investigation. But other than that, you can have it back because give me my audio recorder and I'm good myself and audio recorder because I feel like the best evidence that you can get out of any kind of case or location is audio. I feel yeah. the same one. I love to get EVPs. I love doing EVP sessions. Just yeah. it's great. I love it too. Absolutely. Well, you know, and if you're using your intuition, which we all have intuition, if you're using your intuition and you just like you get in a location and you just ground yourself and you let go and you just let the intuition take over, um, it plays a big part and role into your investigations because not only that, it's the spirits are, you know, they can be uh, a little less uptight and they know that you're a good person and um you know you're just being there you're one with the environment and you got the audio recorder um I, hell some of the best audio recordings that we've got is when we've left the record, recorder where nobody was or we're having conversations and they would chime in exactly and so funny when we were at one of the events and we had to sit there and listen to it well you get out of the bathroom do what? <laughs> Get out of the bathroom, girl. Oh, thank you. you Mister you, It sounds like you're in the shitter trying to talk to her. Can you hear me now? Can you hear about the AT and T? Can you hear me now? I can, yeah, I can hear you now, baby. Hey, <laughs> well, it's uh, funny that you said that because that lady that was in our group at St. Albans that one night. She got mad at Rodney and told him, you talk too much. <laughs> when we were trying to explain to her that some of the vet best EVPs we've ever gotten was sitting around bullshitting or just leaving it alone and not even trying. And she looked right. at us like we were crazy, like we were just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and I got offended, and I said, fuck you, and went and sat in the corner for the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, this is what? the thing is there's so many different opinions out there and different methods of investigating and, you know, people get a little territorial and, oh, this is how you do it. That's not how you do it. That's kind of bullshit. You have to kind of like incorporate a little little bit of everything and list our way out there. Then I'm like, fuck you. I'm going my way and doing my shit. Right. I mean, exactly. if you can't have a little fun, there's no point in doing it. I mean, you got to have a little fun. Especially in public investigations, let's get real people. Public investigations are for entertainment and education. They are not for truly investigating. And that's yeah, another thing, like too. Um, most of these teams that claim to be teams out there, that's all they do. They go to these place, pay, they go to places like St. Albans, Waverly Hills, or whatever, and do public investigations. To me, that's not researching. That's, you know, being just average Joe off the street. You know, taking your equipment and hoping that you'll get something, and the odds are you're not going to because you got too many people with you. Exactly. Yeah. So you well, do investigate. What kind of techniques do you use? Do you do like scientific, religious, or your or metaphysical, or all of it? Well, I like doing both. I like saying, okay, I'm in this room. I'm feeling stuff. Okay, do, is our equipment going off? Um, do we have our, you know, our FLIR cam up? Is Are we getting any kind of readings? You know, and, and the thing about it is most, there's a, I'm not going to say too rare, but there's a slim chance that you're actually going to have a scientific interaction with the spiritual because when you're on that spiritual level, you're sensing things that sometimes the uh, the equipment cannot pick up. Mm-hmm. Right. So what are some of your favorite places that you've investigated? 
Well, St. Albans, absolutely St. Albans. But uh, some of my favorite and, and not really well known is um, the Inn at Wise in Wise, Virginia. But I'll never go back there again until they give me my damn money. <laughs> and because, oh. Yeah, because we done. It's a great place, active every day, every day during daytime and nighttime. It just don't happen at night, folks. Um, we've had wow. one of our best EVPs from the Inn at Wise. Um, they we done a public uh overnight investigation there uh Halloween and Halloween Eve uh and um we done it from like nine o'clock at night till four in the morning and we supposed to get paid for that and they never did give us our money. So here we are, you know, a year later and still haven't and I've I've got tired of fighting with them. And it wasn't just us, it was Pat Bussard because she done gallery readings there and she hasn't been paid either. So I won't do anything else for them or I will, or, you know, I'm not going to until they pay me. So, yeah. Yeah, agreements and agreements, people. Listen. (laughs) Exactly. You know what? And this is the thing is like, I'm not one of those people who are after money or want to get paid for everything, but we was contracted and we sit down and I said, you know, you don't have to pay us. They said, no, you're taking your time out to do this for us. And, you know, it's on Halloween, you have kids, and you're not going to get to go trick-or-treating with them, so let us do this for you. I was like, okay, sure. So we signed a contract, and we filled out a W-9, which they conveniently lost when they switched hands of owners. Um, So, yeah, it's all that shit, but we all, lessons learned. Damn. Damn. So are there any places in the country you want, you would love to investigate? Um, oh my God, I don't know. I just, you know, I I had to revert back to my answers earlier is like, I love these locations that have never been investigated or is not well known. So they fly under the radar because they're not that well known. Um, I like finding new locations. Um, I like visiting some of these locations. Like I've been to Waverly Hills. I've been to Bobby Mackey's. Of course, St. Albans. I do work for them out there as a public investigator and uh, throw events out there. Um, Again, residentials and these places that's never been investigated. I love it. Awesome. Well, where do you think the future of the paranormal world is heading with all this drama and crap going on? You think it's going to survive it? Uh, oh, my God. That's a good question. That's a really good question because when I view the paranormal field, I don't view it like everybody else does because to me it's become this big huge monster um when I see myself in the paranormal field I don't see myself in that group of people and I'm not saying I'm better than anybody else because I'm not but I'm not about drama because I'm spiritually you know awakened and I'm on this path of enlightenment and everything's about you know hugging fucking trees and being happy bitch and no drama and I just don't want no part of it and you know what I do come across of it and I have and what I end up doing is blocking them people out of my out of my life because I do not feed anybody's ego and I never will I'm in this for pure research and I'm not here to prove the existence of the unknown to anybody that's not why I'm in here when I first got into here yeah maybe I would have yeah I want I want people to know that this does exist now, no, I couldn't care less because it's something that you have to experience yourself. Um, the whole paranormal field, um, outside of the paranormal field, people who don't believe, okay, maybe they're not supposed to believe. Um, we're not here to to make anyone believe. They have to have their own experiences. Right. Well, uh, can you tell us about your healing sessions and what what? All that entails and, you know, what you do for these people. Sure, absolutely. Well, okay, so (laughs) I've come out full-blown this year, um, actually, you know, charging for sessions and doing sessions for people. I'm not certified in any way. Um, And and you know what, and and this is like saying I guess I'm a certified medium or whatever. Um, I am an intuitive healer, and that's what I label myself as although I hate labels it seemed the best route to go because intuitive I could go either way I'm psychic medium Um, I'm just intuitive you know I'm in tune with things and of course healing um, which was a big deal for me to come out and say that I'm this and this is what I do Uh, because when I first started awakening 
I, it was purely just psychic mediumship kind of things that was going on in my life. And then there were my hands, which I didn't focus on because I was like, I ain't going to be working with no living people. <laughs> um, <laughs> with my healing sessions, I work a lot like you would if uh, you was having a Reiki session or a hands-on healing session. So it's a little bit of everything. Um, I work and clear your chakras, uh, which is your energy points in your body. Um if there's a blockage in any points of these uh, areas in your body, it can cause physical ailments and it can cause spiritual ailments as well, especially if you're doing psychic work or you're intuitive at all, um, any, which we all are. And I'd say most of us have a uh, third eye blockage, which is located between our brows, which is, you know, seeing what's their psyche. So um, uh, I go in and um you know, ground myself before I start working and um, put my hands around these people. I'll put them on these energy points, not on them, but off of them, like just a little bit away. So my hands start heating up. They'll start feeling that heat. Um, I'll clear out and uh, balance their chakras. And then I'll just do a scan of their body and see if there's any kind of attachments or anything like that. I um, also do like spiritual work, physical ailments. Like usually if someone's having a physical issue in their body, um, I ask everybody not to give me information prior. That way, um, if I pick up on anything, I can see, validate that. You know, they can validate that for me. So, uh, for instance, um, and this is not, and I will tell you guys, this is not how it works for everybody. I'm not out here. I'm not Dr. Phil. I'm not a doctor. Um, I'm purely spirit led and what that means is that when I'm working like this and I'm channeling energy it's all spirit um now when I say spirit that might mean God for some people or the divine um for me it's spirit and the divine um when I channel the energy I am purely a tool so just think of it as they're putting all this healing energy through me and I'm able to work it and help these people with that energy um so uh, for instance, I did have um, a a married couple. Well, they was divorced, but still, I don't know. It was, you know, kind of messed up. But anyway, um, the man was living in the camper outside of his house. Him and his wife divorced. They're no longer married. Um, and still, I don't know, just doing this very unhealthy kind of like together, not together kind of thing, you know. Um, I was asked to work on him, uh, and that's initially what I was doing um i done a couple sessions with him and what what was going on with him he suffers from narcissism and like anger and all this other stuff so i was able to kind of go pull that energy out and put good things back in which sounds kind of retarded guys i I get it i totally get it because um at one point in my life i would have been like okay yeah okay you keep doing your thing honey you keep doing your thing so what happened was his wife wanted a session with me and, you know, I worked on her and healed her and I pick and what happens is that I pick up on things that are wrong in their life or wrong with them spiritually, mentally, physically, and just pull that energy out and put good energy back in and spirit guides me through all this. So I know what to say, I know what to do. Um, the male actually had a negative attachment on him. So as soon as I pulled that attachment off and I pushed it down, uh, made it go away, he actually felt a whole lot better. The whole marriage thing, um, I, I told him, I was like, listen, you need to go off your way. You need to go off your on your path and you need to figure out what's good for you. You need to heal separately. But ultimately, they ended up getting back together and they're very happy. So, um, and again, that don't happen with everybody. Um, and that's just a little bit of what I do. It's it's different. I've done a healing session where I had a woman who had kidney issues and I didn't know it. Um, I went in. As soon as I went in, my hands got hot. The healing energy went down to her kidney. And I always ask everybody because it's different. What does it feel like for you? Well, for her, she said it felt like my hand, like I was holding her kidney in my hand. And it was just warm and healing. And um she had nothing but good things to say afterwards. She said I didn't have to ask that or put warm packs on it at all. So, I mean, it amazes me because, again, I'm just a tool. I'm a vessel. And some of the things that I do, I don't have any prior experience doing. I might have knowledge, a little bit of knowledge of it. But, again, I don't have, you know, it ain't like I sit here all day and and read books because I don't. I'm not a book reader at all unless it's mommy porn. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> and then also, also, uh, Spirit gives me a crystal for each individual that I work with. Um, and these crystals, as you guys know, um, or might not know, but crystals are really good for metaphysical aspects in our life, physical ailments, stuff like that. But it's, and it's funny because it, it awes me. I don't have the complete knowledge of crystals, but I do have some knowledge of crystals. But what I end up doing is I get this crystal given to me by spirit and i tell them i said well stay right here i'm going to look this up and i'm going to give you what the metaphysical properties of these are the physical properties of everything and every time it never fails that this lines up with what they're going through so it means that this crystal they need to be wearing this crystal and um you know it's going to benefit their their life but how does that i mean when you see someone i mean with even if you're not actually going to go do a session like when you're out and about can you pick up on these things with people, just random, just random people on the street? And do you ever just feel the need that you need to say something to them? Well, that's a good question. And I guess I should also say that most of my sessions that I do, I do them distantly, which means I do them from my home and that person's in wherever they're at. So I could be doing a session here with someone in Africa if I wanted to. Uh, but anyway, uh, yes. And this is a big thing that I learned early on in my spiritual path. And unfortunately, some people learn later on on their path is that they don't know how to, um, they don't know how to ground, shield, and protect themselves. So they have all this energy coming to them at once. So they'll be in the middle of Walmart and feel, and like I did, it just wasn't my hands. It would be my freaking feet, man. I would be on fire. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Um, So that's what it is, is all that energy coming towards you. And, yes, I've been out where spirit has said, you know, made me connect with someone who needed that healing session. And, And that's another thing, too, is a lot of people are like, well, you shouldn't charge for what you know, uh, the work that you've been given, if you've been blessed with this gift, you shouldn't charge for it. That's not true. And the reason I do is because if I go out here and I say free healing sessions for everybody, it takes an hour for me to work with people. And the work that I do, it drains me. Um, it takes away from my energy, but not only that, it takes away from my time. And if I went out here and said, free healing sessions for anybody, well, what the hell would I be doing? I'd be here all day sitting doing all this for people, uh, and most of them not even needing it. And the reason I say needing is because the right people will find you. The people who really need you will come to you. And I don't charge people who spirit has, you know, brought to me or I feel like I needed to connect with or give information or a message to from the other side from a loved one. Awesome. Well, with all this being said, you know, can you explain a little bit, I guess, what an empath or inter- inter- shit, what, what intuitive shit? Intuitive. Thank you. <laughs> intuitive. I get, um, well, I'm good tonight. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. Um, well, I mean, you mentioned being empathic, and that's picking up on other people's feelings. And you know what? We're all intuitive. We're all empathic, but we're to a certain point. Now, there's people walking around today who are so empathic that they can't leave their house. Usually you'll know who they are because they're introverts. They don't want to leave their home because they feel, they get anxiety attacks a lot. Well, that what they don't understand what's going on is that they are empathic, and there's ways to prevent it and help with that, and that's the grounding and the shielding. Now, being intuitive is like I said, being in tune with, you know, your psychic self and um, intuitive for me was a better word because I don't, I could never see myself saying I'm a psychic or I'm a medium, but the truth is I do both. Um, so intuitive was the better word for me because like, again, like I hate labels. It's like saying I'm fat. No, honey, I'm voluptuous. Okay. Let's just drop them damn labels. <laughs> So what are the signs of someone being uh, intuitive or uh, or empath or wh- whatever label you want to stick to it or not? Oh, it's okay. No, well, in, being intuitive, part of that would probably be empathic, which we all, like I said, we all are empathic to a certain extent. Some of us are more. Um, again, with empathic people, you would see that they're being introverts. You'll be around someone and you'll notice that you'll be in a happy mood, but they'll be in a, in a shitty or mad or sad mood. You'll start picking up on their feelings and not understand why you feel that way too. But And you don't get it. It don't click with you right then. But if you know, look for the signs, you know that's what's happening. Now, being intuitive or more psychically or you know uh in tune is of course 
being able to see spirits, sense spirits, hear them talk, uh, and there's all kinds of different labels. Um, you know, there's clairvoyance, clairaudience, which is hearing hearing them speak and not seeing, um, hearing radio stations, hearing hearing different things that you cannot pinpoint where it's coming from. There's all kinds of signs. Um, there's out-of-body experiences, which is astral travel. That is a good indication that you are very well in tune on the psychic side, and you just need to learn how to manage it. For me, it was out-of-body experience, and I say it's my crack in the wall. So once I started looking, diving more into it, um, and accepting it and growing from it, then I started growing spiritually. So I don't have them experiences as much. I still have them, but I'm good with them, and I actually welcome them. But they was never consciously, like I could never control them. So it was, you know, it was just here and there, wherever I, whenever I was having them. So, yeah, that's a little bit about uh, being intuitive, though. Okay. <clears throat> So is there a connection between Wicca and being an empath? Um, no, Wicca is a religion. So, um, and this is the thing, and that goes back to the labels is, uh, and this is why I don't do religion uh, is because I walk my own path and that is called spirituality. Spirituality is, uh, walking your own path, finding your own way to God, AKA God, you know, for me, it's spirit or the divine, um, so Wicca is just a religion on that path. So some people might take the Wicca way. Some people might be Christian. Some people may be pagan, um, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, it's their path. It's their religion. So it has nothing to do with it. Strip it away. Because when you are empathic or when you have psychic abilities, that's being spiritual. You can be spiritual and you can have your religion too. Okay. Well, I know you were talking about Wiccan is is a religion. Uh, exactly what kind of religion is it? Just the more spiritual in tune with the earth and all that, you know, compared yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you, you know, they practice spell work. They practice, um, you know, they celebrate uh, Beltane, uh, uh, the solstice, all that. Um, they are very uh, in tune with nature. Uh, but, again, they do spell work. They are witches, Um which a lot of some of them don't like to be called witches. Some of them embrace it and like full on here I am. Uh, I have Wiccan friends. I have pagan friends, and some people like again like I've been in some rituals. So it's interesting. I love it because I'm very nature drawn, and um, mm-hmm. a lot of things they do is is it's a lot different because. Um, with religion, you have rules to follow. You have ways to follow. And that's, again, why I don't do religion is because I'm not one to set be set in ways where I'm told to be a certain way. So here I am walking my path like, bitches, I'm going to, you know, spiritual <laughs> I'm like, I love nature and shit, and, you know, here I am, you know. And that, don't that sound a lot damn better than somebody telling me the way I need to live? That's the way I yeah. feel about it anyway. Exactly. Well, I know a lot of people say Wiccas or witches are evil. Uh, I mean, where where would people get that idea uh, for? I mean, because I've heard it many, many times. And oh yeah, and yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah, you know, Rodney, and it it goes back to religion again because you have witches who were burned. You you know they was. They was burned for even if it was someone like me who was a healer who wouldn't even say they was Wiccan who were who said they was just spiritual. If they w- didn't walk a Christian path, then most of the time they were you know deemed as being witches. If they was a herbalist, if they was like a granny witch, any of that, um, they were deemed a witch. And yes, they are white magic and they are black magic. Um, they are people who practice the black. Uh, just solely the black magic and you know what I always say that you know if you do bad it will come back and get you so um, Uh I think but they know there's a balance between so it's a yin yin and yang thing for them in the Wiccan community that they do you know incorporate some of the dark with the white magic and um, it's just a whole different world and I'm not that extremely knowledgeable on it I just know the basis of it but um I do know that I'm very drawn to that pagan, uh, Wiccan path, and um, I, I love some of it, and I do incorporate it, some of it, some of it into my life, just like I do Native American spiritualism. So, um, 
it's just there's just so much uh again you know it goes back to christianity and i don't mean to put christians down but it's true it's where it dates from it's a uh, fear of people a uh, fear of difference and uh, you know it happens to us in the paranormal field right yeah that's that's true well uh, what can you pick up from people do you uh do you sense vibrations from them or is it things that you can uh, you, you can see, I mean, I, I hate to jump back a little bit, but no, uh, I, I, you're I, 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 I was just kind of curious about that. Okay. Well, what happens with me again, I'm spirit led. Um, I don't see auras and uh, vibrations, not so much. It's not like that, but, um, what I do is whatever uh, spirit gives to me. I, for instance, you know, of course I got the healing, but there's all kinds of stuff different from that. And I'll tell you a funny story is um, I was doing this like really small investigation at a local bar that I, I love going to. And it's, it's my people. It's where I go to do karaoke and all that. Um, I was in there and we were sitting around the table and there was nothing going on. It was just me solo investigating because it's such a small area. So I have my audio recorder and a few other things there. And I was like, well, since we're sitting here and there's nothing going on, I said, well, let me, you know, let me show you a little bit what, what I do. Because they was asking why they call you Holly Hands Holly or whatever. So, you know, without touching her... Um, and just being around her spirit kept saying pregnant, pregnant. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, you don't want to. You're, the biggest thing about these and having abilities is self-doubt and fearing of being wrong. Um, but the truth is, is when you're spirit-led, um, when you're working from spirit, you're never going to get a wrong answer. Um, so I go around the other side of the table and I look at her and I said, I don't know how to ask this. Give me a second. So I was like, okay, let me do it this way. I said, are you planning, are you trying to get pregnant? And her jaw hit the floor, and she put her head down, and there was only three other people in the room that knew about it, but she was actually pregnant, and she was just early in her pregnancy. So that was amazing to me that I even did that. And again, like every time that I read for people, and I get these off-the-wall things, it's like nobody could have known. It amazes me. But what was so funny was this was on the back porch, and we was taking a smoke break, and uh, one of the girls there had her husband, and she said, Holly, can you tell Tony if he's got cancer? And I was like, I can't do shit like that. And then all of a sudden, here it pops in my head. I'm like, is one of your testicles bigger than the other? Honey, they dropped to the damn floor, and they rolled, and they laughed. And I was like, y'all shit me, right? And they was like, no. Like, as soon as they calmed down and stopped laughing and everything, sure enough, one of his testicles is bigger than the other. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not getting cancer. That's not what I'm being shown. But I'm thinking a hernia. So, But you still want to get it checked out because I'm not no doctor, okay? But I thought that was hilarious. And we call them testes. Every time I see them, I call them testes. <laughs> <laughs> And then, you know, and, you know, for spirit, it is, it is, it's wild. Um, And then for, like, spirit, say if uh, I'm around someone and one of their loved ones wants to come through, um, well, here, let me, let me tell you this one. Um, And and going back to guarding and protect myself, uh, I do it all the time. And, And I've done it so much that I do it without, I have to actually put that down to try to communicate for people. And Scarefest, I went to Scarefest. And I was outside smoking, and there was this lady. I was talking to Wes Forsyth. He's from Scarefest Radio. And I was just talking to him about, you know, the stuff we do and all that. And there was a lady out. She was standing out from us. It was kind of weird. She wasn't smoking or nothing. She was just standing there. And she's like, hey. And I walked over to her, and she's like, I was like, yeah. She's like, can you tell me if my mom's with standing beside me? And I'm like, well, <laughs> I was like, give me a second. So when I said give me a second, I had to put them guards down so I can let the energy come in. Because if I don't have them guards up, it just, it'd be a whole damn mess. I'd just be a mess all the time. My energy would be low. I would just be having spirits come to me left and right. But yes, I did see her mom and I got to deliver some messages for her through, you know, her mom come through. Um, actually, I, it was funny because um, I said, you know, your mom, there's a lady here. I don't know if it's your mom, but she's thin. She's got red hair, um, but I'm being given a name. Uh, oh, what was the name? Uh, da, 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 da. Shoot, I was, I need to write this shit down. Um, anyway, I said, well, I'm getting this name. And I said, does that sound familiar to you? Um, again, you know, still this being far 
being this far into my path, I still have a little self-doubt in the back of my head. But she said that was my aunt, and that was my mom's sister. I said, well, she's here, and, you know, she's around you. You should know that. Um, And then I didn't know that at the time, but I said there is also a son, a grandson to your mom, grandson. So I don't know if that's your son or your sister's son. I said, there's a son with her because, you know, he, they showed me that. So she said, yes, my son has passed away. And I said, well, you know, he's there too. And I just delivered messages for her. And part of that is healing because when you deliver messages for people in a time of need like that, she needed that. And the funny thing apart, you know, the funny part about it was is she said, I wasn't supposed to be here tonight. She said, um, it just so happened that somebody gave me free tickets, and I come, and here I am. And she said, I believe this is exactly why I'm supposed to be here. So, you know, spirit always works that way. Okay, now that's, uh, we had, this is where I, I get confused. We had a, a client one time who, just out of the blue, started, I don't know, reading or just saying stuff. I mean, and it really got to me. She was uh-huh. saying that she saw my dad. I mean, because it was still kind of fresh. My dad had passed, you know, and it was like, I don't know how she got the information. I don't know if any of anything that she was saying, you know, about her having these abilities were true or not, because she is kind of, I mean, like legitimately crazy. Right. But, you know, it, it, I, I think about that night a lot, and, some, you know, sometimes it aggravates me and makes me sad because I wanted it to be true so bad. And then, you know, I hear how she was, and people tell me, you know, the way she is, and, you know, then it just pisses me off that I feel like she just, you know, was just doing that and didn't know what she was talking about. Right. And, I mean, so well, how, how, how can people kind of pick up on if somebody's saying these things, if they're legit or not? Right. I mean, is there any way? Right. They are, they are, and they're called code readers is what happens. Some people will pick up words off of you. They'll be paying attention more than you think. And, you know, oftentimes we say stuff and not even realize we're saying it. You know, we don't realize who's listening. You know, we don't think nothing about it. Um, You know, some of the signs of going to someone is, first of all, if you're going to, you know, if you're asking for a reading, don't tell them shit. Um, And that's what I say. I'm like, don't tell me anything. I will ask questions. But then questions will never be anything to get answers from them questions to give something to you. Um, if I pull a name, which is rare for me, and I'm being, you know, and that's the, another thing you want to look for is somebody to be honest with you and upfront and saying, I may do this. I'm not saying I can. Um, you know, they're going to be telling you things that nobody else are, possibly could know. Um, they're going to be telling you things uh, that, uh, are not just things that I, I would tell you if I was counseling somebody. You know what I'm saying? It's a yeah. deeper kind of thing. Um, just like the lady that I was talking to, I said there was there was some kind of, uh, there was drinking issues, um, and, you know, sensing some of the things that happened when she passed. I said there was a separation in the family um, and you know, stuff like that. And I was right on with that. Um do I know? Like I said, when I give this information to people, I don't know if it's right or wrong. I'm just like, I don't even, listen, one time I even read for somebody and I got a nickname and it was like some goofy ass nickname. And I'm like, I know this is going to sound stupid, but what's this name? Got? And she's like, oh my God, that's what my husband used to call me. And that's when you know, I mean, that's, you know, it's stuff like that. Things that they couldn't possibly know. Okay. Damn. But I mean, some days, it, I mean, cause we, we've had a couple do this to us just out of the blue. And sometimes I'll sit and think about it and where I'm a hypochondriac and where I, you know, I get so emotional about Because I am, I'm kind of, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve and it, sometimes it bothers me. Because I'm right. like, were they, were they sincere or were they just doing this? And then I'll get pissed off. I'm like, no, we're worth getting pissed off over. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. The things that she told you about your dad, was it things that, you know, made sense or resonated with you that, you know, something that she wouldn't know? Because she might be crazy, but she also might have a gift, but not, you know. So, okay. There's some people who can just write out 
have these straight out conversations with, you know, a past loved one. Uh, now, it all depends on how recent that loved one passed away. This is the things that people don't get is like um, if you have someone who just passed away, say, last week, you're going to have a harder time. And, and it's actually a moral thing in the psychic community. It's like you shouldn't read for someone who has lost a loved one that early because that loved one is grieving and they want that communication. And it's also a thing too, is that you're supposed to let the spirit settle and let them, you know, do what they need to do. Uh, now you don't always get that because you have people who are murdered and they're right away trying to gain the energy to speak to a medium or somebody and find someone to talk to. Um, but you definitely just think about the things that she told you, Robin. And if it's things, I mean, we can talk when we go off air or whatever, but if it's things yeah. that, uh, uh, Sorry, I just what? <laughs> that, can I ask you something real, real quick, Robin? Sure. Okay. Now this is going to sound weird, but what's there's a the nickname Pussy Cat? Oh, my daddy used to call me that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, he's that's your son, honey. So, yeah. Your daddy used that's to pretty, call you Pussy Cat. My daddy always called me Little Pussy Cat. Oh, oh, my God. Ooh, you West Virginians, y'all weird. <laughs> hey, my mom calls me puss. My mom, call, my mom calls me puss. Well, I, it's different for a woman to call another woman puss. But oh, your daddy it's a pussy cat. cat. It's like, that's, pussy oh, cat. That's, that's, that's weird, man. That's strange. <laughs> weird that's is that you do that because your mom's always in the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. My mind's always yeah. to go too, but you have to, it's your daddy. It's different, you know. Yeah. I don't call, I don't call my daughters or granddaughters pussy cat. Are you? That, no. <laughs> uh, no, no. If I say that around them, I'd be in jail. I mean, come on. Well, nowadays well, you would be, but when I was growing up, it was no big deal. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Just like when I was home, I didn't have no problem running around talking. Like, I would go through the house in my panties, and that's it. Even when I was fully developed, and I wouldn't think nothing about it. My dad wouldn't think nothing about it. And I was, you know, getting up in the middle of the night, walking through the house. So, it's, Aww. you know, it's one of those things. Robin, that was for you, honey. And, Aww, yeah. Thank you. That made my night. You're welcome. It don't happen too often when I'm on air like this. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, okay, uh, this this is just will tie into this. Uh, are the days where you know the emotions are too much, and if so, how do you cope with it? Not for me, but for other people, I know they are. I mean, there's a lot. There's I have to stay away from these people usually because a big part of who I am and what I do is I understand who I am. I know why I'm here, and it's to heal people and it's to help people. Um, some of us call call it light working, and you know it, it is working with a lot and you know being able to help heal the living and to also help heal the people who've passed on because in my belief it's not that we die and we stay here or we pass over we actually um say for instance if someone was murdered or whatever they have a reason to stay here um just to stay here and not pass completely over because um, you know, don't think for instance that someone who has passed over and is okay and they have fully accepted their death has passed over that they can't come back because that's not true because they stay with us all the time. They, they you know, they can go wherever the hell they want to. Um, <clears throat> but but um, people who are empathic really need to look into that grounding and shielding and protecting because I don't have issues with it. Now, um, I do know I have issues when I'm around people who are not true. I can sense them right away and I will back away from them. I will, if they're on my social media, I won't unfriend them, but I will unfollow them because I know what kind of person they are. Um, and I've always had that intuition looking back on it since I was younger. It's like I've always been that older kind of soul. Like I've never acted my age and I could tell when people were lying to me. Um, and, you know, all that is intuition that we all have. But we we look at it as 
it's nothing more than what it is. Um, but it is part of our psychic development that we could actually grow on. Everybody could, you know, grow on it. Uh, some people don't need to, and some people are suppressed for a reason because if maybe if they did, they would use it for the wrong reasons. They would be, but there's people in this field now that are doing mediumship and psychic work who are so consumed by ego um, that they work from ego. And that's the difference between what I do and what a lot of it, these other people do. And you see them, they'll say they're psychic mediums and you'll never hear them do a reading. You'll never see them do a reading. Um, and, and I get that. I mean, you know, it's, you know, I mean, I could sit here and say all day that I do this and that and um, not go out in the field and do the work and nobody see it. That don't mean that it doesn't make me any less, but these people are actually doing readings, but they're they're doing cold readings. They're doing it from ego. They are pulling information from a source that, you know, is not spirit-led given to them, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. But I just, you know, just quick question when you're doing reading i mean like people like you and other people that do this do y'all ever get worried that it's something disguising itself trying to come through not me no and i'll tell you why um part of what i do is uh and it's not in my belief okay don't get me wrong people but i know when you go back to demonic things and i hate even bringing that word up demons um it's based on a religion if you go back demons are from a religion based thing uh for me it's negative entities is what i call them uh because it's what they are um i've worked around and i've pulled these things off people i've sent them down into um well back where they came from or into i always People ask me, they're like, well, where do you send them? Well, I send them to Mother Earth. Uh, Mother Earth takes them, and that's, you know, whatever happens there is whatever happens. But all I know is that I've helped these people. I've pulled this negative energy off of them, these attachments, because there's so many of us that carry these attachments and don't even realize we have them, not full, in like, negative entities, uh, which are mostly found around people who are depressed, have anger, um, have drug issues, they have, you know, abuse issues, all this, you will find that they are something there always, um, whether it be a parasite, which is a smaller kind of, um, you know, just kind of like you would think of an insect attaching itself to you, like, you know, like the face huggers on aliens. Yeah, <laughs> like I've worked with someone before. They had something like that on their back. It's almost like it's weird. Um, but uh, I worked with a 17-year-old boy who had a dark negative attachment with him. And I'll tell you what, it's the most darkest one that I've pulled off someone so far. And uh, he, what was going on is still going on. And I'm still working with this kid is because um, ever since he was about eight years old, he's been, that he can remember, he's been actual traveling. But if you've ever watched Insidious, um, yes. That's actual mm-hmm. traveling, by the way. Um, he is actually one of those kids that go out into the darkness and gets lost and sees all the negative, nasty shit that's out there. And it's brought back a, an attachment that's been with him since he was about seven or eight years old. So when I went in to work for this family, again, spirit led me there, but it wasn't for an investigation. They wanted us to investigate, so I was doing a, a preliminary oh. interview. And um, through this interview and stuff, I figured out, why I was there and it was because of him so you know uh, I think it was a few days later I said I got to work with you I uh, opened up you know I went to his bedroom got him to sit there open up sacred space um, <clears throat> I had my selenite wands with me which I can talk about if you guys want to talk about that a little bit I, know, I don't know if you want to do a two-hour show or whatever uh, but anyway um, when I pulled this off of him and again, if any, if you ever have an attachment or somebody says you have an attachment, it takes them more than five to eight, maybe even 10 to, I'm going to say 10 max minutes to get this thing off of you and away, then there's something wrong. They don't know what the fuck they're doing because it only takes me a couple minutes to pull off energy and push it down and say bye, motherfucker. Because when I pulled this thing off, it was beside him and in the darkest voice, it says he needs me. And, you know, telepathically, psychically, I said, he does not need you. And I pushed him down, and that was it. But what happens when you have someone who had an attachment for that long, it's like 
someone who has a tumor and you go surgically remove it, you're going to be open for infection. You're going to be open for all this other shit going on. And that's exactly what I tell people. And it's the same thing. It's like an energy uh, infection or something. You know, you're more prone to getting that attachment again if you don't do the right shit that you're supposed to do spiritually. And the thing is, the 17-year-old boy is like, he is like prep at school he's a sports jock you know all this shit um they are not they they are big christians but you know they knew as soon as i come in there and when i told this boy what was happening to him he cried the 17 year old boy who is like jock you know whatever he cried and i went and hugged him i said i know what you're going through i i know what you're going through but he don't want to believe it's real even after i've done all this after I've uh, removed this attachment, and he knows what I said. You know, I was right on. I knew things that nobody else knew but him. Um, he still uh, don't want to believe. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. So, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, <clears throat> it, that's a part that I, I mean, you know, you guys, I think the second time that I've talked about it publicly, on air because I talked about it on one of my shows but uh, I hadn't talked about it but I don't care to talk about it it's just that I'm not one to talk about myself all the time or what I do because I'm not you know I'm not going to post online hey I removed a negative energy off somebody like applaud me like this or you know (laughs) what the fuck ever (laughs) so with all this you got going on and several people know who you are now Miss Holly what's it like (laughs) when you have a private life um, well, you know, plus, you know, <laughs> um, it's, it's good. I mean, it's good, but, um, I don't know. I don't think there's any negative there. Um, because of my modeling and because I do put myself out there, um, and, and in that sense, that's a whole different conversation going into my modeling, but I have a lot of, uh, stalkerish type people, but, um, nobody that's, you know, tried to attack me I've never been attacked on my, uh, because of my work or um, any of that so what do you do when you're not so busy because all you do is freaking do something <laughs> I listen exactly what, when I'm not busy I have three kids so I do that too I like to stay busy um, that's what I do and it seems like every aspect of my life is helping people even in my modeling and that's the reason I got into it and that's the reason I go back to Pat. Pat Bussard is, she's not only a psychic medium and a paranormal investigator, she's also a photographer. She's the first one that photographed me. And, you know, I used to be 300 pounds at one time, and I'm still a big girl, but I found a lot, not just from the photographs, not at all. What happened was, you know, when I started becoming more spiritually in tune and finding myself I found self-love and you find with self-love you start accepting yourself for who you are and though yes I need to be better on some aspects of my life but I'm going to love me because if you don't love yourself nobody's truly going to ever love you and what better love to have than to love yourself and accept yourself so in doing that I have found over the years um, that people will come to me and they will write me. They'll come up to me and hug me. They'll make me cry, which I hate. But, um, uh, for instance, um, one of the volunteers at St. Albans, I didn't know this at all until her mom told me. Um, we had um, a little get-together, and she came up to me and she said, Holly, she said, you have no idea what kind of impact you're having on my daughter's life. She said, you know, she's not a big girl. She's not a big girl. She's a small girl, and she thinks that she, you know, needs to be skinnier. She's not pretty. Um, she said, this girl has your picture of, because I took a selfie with her, you know, at uh, one time during one of the events, and she has it on her background of her phone. And she said, you need to keep doing what you're doing. No matter how hard you're, you are on yourself or what others say, you need to keep doing what you're doing because you're making a difference in other people's lives. And, of course, I broke down like a big baby. But, you know, and, and that's not the first time that someone's told me how much I've inspired them because not only for the weight loss, because I'm struggling with my weight loss right now, and I'm very open about it. And I think that's why 
people, uh, you know, are attracted to talk to me that way and to talk to me about it and just like me because I'm just me and I put myself out there as I am. I don't go Photoshop my pictures to make me look thinner. I don't Photoshop my pictures. To, you can't recognize my damn face. You know, I'm me. This is who I am. I love me and you should love you because we're all uniquely different. That's Aww. true. I just told my daughter just about that same thing today. <laughs> <laughs> I preach it, honey. She's with her identity. She, she's real down on herself right now. Yeah, I, I, I said, well, nobody loves you, but you love yourself. <laughs> Exactly. And you know what? We're all, we all get that way. And I have the moments too. And sometimes I have to kick myself in the ass and be like, bitch, get up. Um, you know, we all have the moments and because we're wired that way, that's how society has brought us up. You know, it's true. And, um, you know, we look in the mirror a lot of times and we have the identity crisis where we're seeing something else different than what everybody else is seeing. I go through it. You go through it. Everybody goes through the damn thing. And women especially, I mean, you know, we, we struggle a lot with appearance and weight and what we look like. But when you start accepting yourself and saying, you know what, I'm going to strip down naked and get in front of the mirror and I might have a fat row here and I might have floppy inner thighs but you know what? That's stuff that I can work on and get better at and maybe change. If not, you know what? This is still me. I'm not out here saying, I'm not one of these women who uh, is big and saying, oh, you know, it's okay to keep being big and just keep be- getting bigger. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, yes, I can work on myself while I'm feeling beautiful too because I know I need to be more healthy. I know that. We all know that. But you know what? Telling someone they're a fat ass and they lose weight um, it's not the way to go when you're trying to motivate somebody and inspire somebody. And it needs to be through self-love but, and not by body shaming someone. Yeah, I mean, it has to be for yourself. And yes. I just have to tell you, I love your pictures. I think they're beautiful. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you know what? This is the thing, too. Is most people don't know this, but I grew up in a home where my mom never told me I was beautiful, and she never encouraged me to do anything because, on top of this, I love to sing, too. Um, I didn't know I had a voice. I didn't, you know, it took me a long time to be okay with taking photographs, too. Um, I remember when Pat showed me my first session with her, I cried. I cried because I was like, is that me? You know, and that was a big uh, hurdle that I overcame, and it, it really helped me a lot on my my path of self acceptance. Well, you're just you really are, and I'm not just saying this. You're a beautiful person inside and out. I love hanging out with you, and you are uh-huh. you know, you're so fun loving. Thank so you, I Robin. Love you, beautiful, black, white, purple. <laughs> That's right, baby. That's right. We're all spiritual what? beings in this damn vessel. That's right. Well, you know, speaking from a from a big boy point of view, oh, it, you yeah, know, yeah, it, it, it's not just women that go through this. Now, men do too, because I know right. I've I, I've fought with it since, gosh, uh, 2003, and, and that was one of the reasons why I'm as sick as I am. But uh, you know, it it does suck. And I hate to hear people say it. You know, my somebody taught my granddaughter to say that, and I, I, I sit down and I talk to her and I told her, I said, "Honey, when you say people are fat, I said it really, really hurts their feelings." And I said, she "It's does. a really bad, it's a bad thing, and you don't need to say that." And she didn't understand it for a little bit. Then, when she'd say it to me, and you know, I'd just walk away, wouldn't say anything back to her. You know, she she seen, wow. I'm hurting Papa. Yeah. And it, it right. broke her heart. Yeah. And, and you know, then, I've always been, I'm sorry. Uh, well, as far as you were saying, if a, if a three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old can sense that type of pain that you're putting on somebody, you damn well know that a damn adult knows it too. Well, absolutely, and this is the thing, Grow, like growing up, I got my uh, defense mechanism, and you know what it is? Making fun of myself before anybody else made fun of me, so I never really, really I, I do it, I do it too, I'm like, come on, fat ass, I'm, I, I'm, I think it's hilarious, and I'm used to it, and yeah. people like, Holly, don't do that, and I'm like, I, it's nothing, I, I'm not I'm not hurting or sad when I say stuff like that, it's, it's because that's what I've always done, because when growing up, now I love my mom, we didn't have a good relationship when I was growing up, I mean, we have okay relationship of course I've been out of the house I'm 32 now but um when I started in my teenage years I was chunky I wasn't a big girl 
but she would say, Holly, you're getting too fat. So instead of me wanting to go out and go on, you know, start exercising and lose weight, I wanted to eat a fucking bag of chips. <laughs> you know, so yeah. I grew up with that. And, you know, and, and then I have been through it more in adulthood, I think, than in my teen, you know, in my teens uh, because of me making fun of myself before. But then, you know, people will come back with, uh, like, I remember we was living on base. I had, you know, I had all three of my kids and I was riding my husband's bike and uh, somebody, it come back to me that somebody had made the comment, I look like a big fat polar bear around the bicycle and you know what i was like i was pissed and i was like fuck you but you know it does hurt it does hurt more than people realize it, yeah it really does. Me, i've noticed rodney does the exact same thing he will jump in and make a joke and i'll tell him please quit saying that please quit calling yourself name yeah and he, see, and I did it right. well the reason why i do it and i'm sure holly will too you take the power away from anybody else Exactly. To say it to hurt you, you take that power away from them. Yep. That's what I Absolutely. do, and that's why. And it, it is. A, it's a defense mechanism, and that way we ain't hurt. We hurt. You know, we'll say it so it don't hurt. Keep right. from other, it's someone else from saying it to hurt us. See, what well, kind of makes me wonder is okay. My daughter. I don't think you've met her, Holly, but she has cystic acne, and she also mm-hmm. has a blood disease that. She doesn't sweat through a regular sweat gland. She sweats through all of her pores, and she gets really bad acne and boils and stuff. Yeah. And she's gotten into the habit where she'll make fun of herself, and she'll call herself names. And it's starting to make me think, is that a defense mechanism yep, for her? it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it because... my heart. <laughs> well, yeah, because that's your that's your daughter, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, for me, I mean, I, not only did I have my weight, but I have eczema too. And that's something I did get picked on a little bit for through high school because I never would wear shorts because my eczema is extreme eczema. Now it's gotten better as I got older, but my son, my youngest one, uh, out of all three of my boys is the only one that actually got them, uh, got them traits from me. And he has extreme eczema and he struggled with it and he got self-conscious. And you talk about mama bear, honey. I'm like, bitch, anybody says anything to my baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course I tell him, yeah, I tell really. him, I'm like, you tell him to fuck off and look the other way. But of course my kids won't. And I get in that mama bear mode, but you know, it does. Everybody has that defense mechanism. But, Robin, you have to remember that when they have a good support system at home, I think that makes all the difference. Um, you know, and that's what I say about my weight. Do I think it is healthy for people to be overweight? No. And, again, our terms of overweight is kind of disgusting because now 12 to 14s are, like, uh, plus size, which I'm offended at. <laughs> but, um and again, with the labels, there you go with the labels. But it's all about, to me, uh, you know, about your health and how you feel. And I'll be purely honest with you right now. It's like I'm okay with myself, obviously, but health-wise, I know I need to do better. I really do because I worry about my health more than I do my looks or anything like that. And that's the way it should be. Yeah, yeah I mean, I really all of us need to be more health conscious. I need to – I'm telling you, shoo. There's so much I need to quit. Jeff hollers at me all the time because I have terrible <laughs> eating habits and terrible drinking habits. <laughs> and that, that, that's, that, that, listen, that's the way the society has molded us. We don't have any other options. We're too fucking poor to buy organic food. And and this is the thing. is also on my path and part of my weight loss is I've become more health conscious. And I'm wanting to eat more, like, you know, cleaner and stuff like that, but I can't afford it. So I do the best I can. Um, and of course I've got kids and you can't deny your kids is something that, you know, they're used to. And, um, you can just make a better example and try to take better care of yourself. And that's what we can do. And you try to change that cycle. Well, I've seen some of your soul food on Facebook and you make me hungry. <laughs> honey, when, I'm a southern woman, honey. I like my fried taters, cornbread, and soup beans. I can cook up like a bitch. But I also uh, know that, you know, when I I really uh, have, when I started losing weight and, you know, discovering ways of losing weight, and it's not no magic pill, people. It's all about self-love, first of all, and then just knowing what foods are, you know, saying, you know, 
okay, instead of having fried taters, I'll have a baked potato. You know, just weaning yourself off some of the foods because you can't just, and this is the thing, is people think they can just drop off. I'm going to stop sugar right now, and that's not the way it goes. When I stopped drinking pop like Coke and stuff like that, I went to Diet Mountain Dew, which is no better, but, you know, who are you to judge? I hate when people are like, oh, but that's no better. But guess what? You're taking the initiative. You're you're actually stepping down from some of the more potent foods. So it's like, you know, you are doing better. So that's people think that if they don't lose so many pounds in a week, they give up. First of all, they give up. And the exercise, they'll start out with these more extreme exercises that they can't physically do. And they get frustrated and they stop it. But the truth is, if you slowly take out some of these foods, like I don't do sugar anymore. Um, I'm allergic to milk, so it's never been an issue for me. But I've switched to like uh, ground beef to ground chicken, which is, uh, you know, it's a little bit cheaper than ground beef, to be uh, honest with you. But, you know, just doing stuff like that and then exercise you know walking you don't have to have a gym membership uh you can walk and just do basic exercises and lose weight and be healthier and that's what people they have this standard of what they think is supposed to happen and that's when they start getting on the diet pills or fentramine that damn fentramine is really bad for you people like i've seen so many of my friends get on that shit and they'll lose a bunch of weight and they will go off of it and they will gain more weight back than they and you know was before they even started the venture And, of course, it has bad side effects, too, like heart problems and everything. See, that kind of worries me because I was worried about that, too, because my stepdaughter, Jeff's daughter, is on that right now. That is the one that has, like, the high HCG levels and all that, yep. right? Yep, yep. See, it's, she's on, like, a 500-calorie limit a day. Oh, God, yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. And it scares me. I'm like, Amanda, you're die high. Yeah. You know, you can't she, live off of that. You know, the truth is, look at it. Okay, look at our ancestors back then. What did they have? They didn't have no other option but to garden, okay? And they was healthy. Um, And this is my thing, and this is my take on it. And I'm not no damn doctor, but I will tell you what works for me, and I know will work for everybody else. If you stick to your fruits and veggies and you're, you're, you know, a little bit more lenient on your meat, because believe it or not, we do not need milk and we don't, we do not need milk and we do not need meat. You get more calcium from kale than you do damn milk. And that's all of our life. What we have been told, drink your milk, your vitamin, you know, your vitamins there. And I'm like, no, kale has way more uh, calcium than milk does. Wow. See, I did not know that. See, they don't tell yeah. you this shit. They no, they don't. They don't want you to know. They don't want <laughs> you to know. And this goes back to my whole thing about the pharmaceutical companies benefiting off of the food, which is all processed, um, the big rise in cancer. And it goes back to all that. And then, you know, part of what I, I've been doing on my path is really, like I said, finding newer eating habits and newer lifestyle changes. And it's been holistic healing. Um, and, you know, if we can't afford... And this is the way the government likes it, and this is the way it is because the pharmaceutical companies has got to have their money, and ultimately the man upstairs has got to have it too because what happens is we're getting fed a bunch of fucking bullshit, and our bodies don't know how to take it. We're not meant to eat all that. That Them chemicals are not meant to be in our bodies. Cause, and then what happens? We end up getting tumors. We get cancer. We get diabetes. All these diseases because our red blood cells are up fighting against this food that we're putting in our body. That's what they're not telling you. Uh, and, and, you know, I could preach on. I get very, very preachy with that <laughs> shit, but that's what it is. Hey, you're <laughs> you're right. right. I preach about it too uh, because, you know, I grew up with a garden. I still try the garden. And uh, and that's what I keep preaching to my damn kids. I'm like, you all don't understand. You all got to learn how to do this. Well, it's too hard, Dad. It's, it's, too, it's too much work. Fuck it. I don't care. You know, yeah. it's what's going to keep you healthy. It's what's going to keep you going. But no, yeah, you know, they're like, it's too easy to go to the damn store and get a damn can of food or a frozen pizza or whatever. But it's cheaper. It's cheaper. It's cheaper. It I mean, it is. Yeah. It is right. cheaper. And 
I know. Hell, if I know, I know more than anybody. I'm, I live poor too. I'm not above anybody. And I tell everybody, listen, I ain't got no damn money. I grow a garden every year and get what I can out of it. And then the rest, you know, the winter, of course, I had to try. I don't like doing canned food, but that's what I got to do. I mean, it's all processed food. Yeah. But again, we're not given options. And you would think more than anything in the world that our gardeners, that they would put in more money, the government would put more money in, in for our organic farmers, but no, they have so many regulations on them that they cannot possibly have their business. So this this is the reason why organic food is so more, much more expensive. It's so much easier for them to put all these chemicals on our food and grow these big gardens, big commercial gardens where, you know, it's all... Uh, they got all the chemicals on there to keep the bugs off and everything else, and the poor, the 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 smaller businesses cannot, they cannot thrive. Just like some of our smaller businesses in our towns, Walmart comes in, it wipes every damn one of them out because they don't got no damn chance. Exactly. <laughs> Rod, you know Rod? Well, I'm I was just waiting. I figured y'all were gonna say something else. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, am a southern, I am a southern gentleman. I know when to sit back and let the ladies have their word. What did you say? <laughs> I said, you're full of shit, too. You tell me when to shut up. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but that's because you won't shut up sometimes. <laughs> I you wouldn't but you wouldn't it wouldn't do you no good to be around me because I never shut up. Well, I, I, I I've got really good patience with people, and Robin can tell you this, and everybody else that knows me, it, you know, I'll just sit back and listen, and uh, I'm really good at that for some reason. But I do have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, since since you was talking about your modeling and everything. Uh, have you ever done any full nudity with your modeling career, or uh, or would you consider doing that? Doing what? Full nudes, did you say? Yeah. <laughs> Is that what full you Oh. Yeah, full no. Yeah, naked, baby. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, no, I haven't, and I get a lot of requests for them, and I struggle with that because, I mean, you know, I do have self-confidence, but there is a fine line for me, I guess. Um, I'd have to probably do it a more classy kind of style because that's the kind of girl I am. Um, I don't want to give people too much, you know. I already have people made, like, it's funny because Robin was going back, do you ever, like, what do you think about all these people following you? Well, it's funny because I've had two different women, one saying, hey, my ex-husband, on my timeline, she's like, my ex-husband keeps all your pictures and uh, I just wanted to let you know. And I'm like, okay, and, you know, what, what do you want me to do about that? But, <laughs> I don't know. You never know what I'll do in the future, but I also have to keep in mind of my professionalism in what I do on, you know, with my healing and stuff. And, um, yeah. All right. So, so you're not going to be no, uh, uh, what's Trump's wife's name? Uh, Milani. You're not going to do that. <laughs> well, uh-huh. honey, I, don't, I don't have the body for that, but, uh, not saying that I couldn't do it, but I, I'm just saying I don't think you know it would be my my thing. Well, Robin, you don't have to ask her the next question then. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to, Rod. <laughs> what what was it? Kinda, anyway, well, her question was going to be what type of modeling do you prefer to do. And, uh, you know, you pretty much answered that. And then it went into my next question. You know, have you always been comfortable with your body to do risque modeling? If not, how did Um, you get over that fear of showing your body, which you've already covered that? Oh, you know what? Well, yeah, true. So we'll just go right into, uh, uh, since you're you're our boss, uh, what made you decide to start, you know, your own radio network? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Um, Well, I've been on two other 
um, networks. Um, I was with URN Network to begin with, and then I had another couple who had a started up a network and they wanted me to be a host on theirs. Um, and that I kind of backed out of that one. I started getting bad feelings, which I'm glad I did because that network is no longer uh, around. Uh, a big story on that one. But anywho, um, URN Network kind of I wasn't feeling it anymore it just wasn't for me um because I like to have a setting where everybody's in communication um at least a little bit you know but in that case it was every show was out for themselves there was no you know going back to the network owner like most people don't even didn't even know who the network owner was and you know it's just that type of thing and um so I was like, you know what, um, I think I want to do my own radio network. And it was kind of almost like, I want to say I was kind of thrown in it because there was kind of a little bit of drama, drama that went on with not me, but uh, with other people who, um, you know, things were said to me that I didn't like and I don't like to be talked to a certain way, especially if I'm, you know, not guilty of something or or, you know, part of any drama, I'm like, listen, if you come at me like smart-assy or anything and I ain't part of anything, you better be damn sure that I'm going to snap back. But anywho, I was like, you know what, I want to start a network where it's all about positivity. It's not about how many listeners we have. It's about connecting. It's about the host having fun, uh, being able to talk to their guests and, you know, getting these messages out and, Getting to but having a radio show gives you the opportunity of not only connecting to these people but sharing ideas. And um, I love just being able to have this network and giving people the opportunity to do that. Now you could, I mean, people could go have their show and and you know, whatever on a, another network, or they could start their own network or whatever. Um, but uh, now I've been through quite a few hosts since we started last January. Uh, again, you know, you you see who's cut out for it and who's not. Um, there's some people who want to get in for, into it just for the hello, I'm here. You hear my voice, uh huh? And they don't know what the hell they're doing. I'm not saying that you can't get in here if you don't know what the hell you're doing because it takes time. I was just like everybody else. I was kind of thrown into it when I first got into it, so I had to learn the ropes of it. But after I got into it, I was passionate about it, and, you know, I was passionate from the beginning, but I was ready to take that uh, leap and take that responsibility. Some people don't want to take the responsibility, and um, they don't know how much work truly goes into it. Yeah, I don't well, like the responsibility end of things. <laughs> no, no. She, she's just a giggle box on the other end. <laughs> hey, there's all you gotta have. See, that's why we have co-hosts. They gotta keep us. There's gotta have. There's gotta be a balance. Mhm, mhm. Well, that's I know. Right. And, and, good balance. <laughs> exactly. You have a good balance. Yeah, she's been balancing me for eight years. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, we appreciate you know you giving us this opportunity because uh, when you uh, spoke to us about or to me about it, and I talked to Robin about it, uh, you know, I, I I know a lot of people in the network mostly do a lot of paranormal or things like right. that, and I try to bounce all over the place, and and I hope that we've made you proud. I hope we made you proud, yeah, absolutely. Mama. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, uh, and that's what I love about you guys. It's like I never have to worry about, you know, is Rodney doing his show? Is, you know, are y'all doing your show? Or y'all got a guest? You know, you're, you're on top of it. You are passionate about it. You love what you're doing. And you're doing it right. And you want to do it right. Um, and that's the kind of work ethic that I like. And that's the kind of work that I have. And, um you know, it's good to have that on a network because you have that independence in a host that's not dependent on you all the time, uh, and they do their thing. They they have their own show and they're thriving, and they don't have to. You don't have to ever worry about if they're having a damn show. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, right. I have some that I have to get on to and ask them if they're even having a damn show anymore, and it shouldn't have to be that way at all. 
Right, right. right. That's true. And I am very passionate about it because, you know, uh, one of our guests was a uh, transgender, and uh, that had a little uproar here, but I don't care. I, I wanted him, uh, well, her, to have their opportunity to speak and, and educate some of the people in, you know, in our listening area. Absolutely, and I love that, too, because you know me. I'm very open-minded. I love my LGBT community. I don't see any kind of, uh, you know, when it comes to sexual, sexual preference, when it comes to religion, when it comes to politics, all that bullshit, you know, it all disappears for me. Again, you know, we're all spiritual beings in a physical body, and that's if you're an asshole, you're an asshole. That's the point of it. And, yes, exactly. I've had transgender. you. <laughs> yes. So I've had I've had like gays on my show. I've had transgenders. I have I have transgenders who were in the paranormal field. Yeah, I love it. I love people. And you know, like I said, there's assholes everywhere. And it just so happens if you're an asshole and you're gay, then you're a gay asshole. You know, if you know, <laughs> just, that's just the way it is. Right. That's right. Well, I, I know when we tried to mix her, I had a hell of a time with that. And, you know, we, we came back to Block Talk, and I talked to you about it, and you were fine with it. And since we are doing a two-hour show now every week, I mean, it's, it has helped. I think it's helped open up a lot more, uh, especially for our guests, because we've had so many that, I mean, it, it just felt like we were speeding through it, and they had a whole yeah. lot more to say. So just like now, us tonight. Exactly. Yep, exactly. exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know, then you have some guests where you're like, holy shit, is this interview over? And it's just like, it's just like 1030. <laughs> you know, I can I've actually say that we've had, I think we've had two guests like that. And the one, I, and it really pissed me off because I, I, I've listened to this person's music ever since I was a kid. And within 35 minutes of the yeah. show... I mean, he was ready to go, and it it really pissed me off because I'm like, damn, I worked so hard to get you on the show, and then you just flipped me off pretty much. Yeah, as soon as he realized we wasn't like this big, huge network, he didn't want nothing to do with us. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, that, you don't need anybody like that on your show. I mean, I've had some assholes that would go on about how I did their graphic. And I'm like, you asshole, you're the one that come to me wanting to be on my network, on my show, and you're going to tell me that I need to make my graphic differently? Bullshit, fucker, you should just be happy I gave you the chance to be on here. And that's the way I feel about it. Yeah. And you know what? I don't care if we're a big network or not. It's, it's not about uh, the length of it, baby. It's how you move it. Exactly. <laughs> that makes exactly. out here trying to have who's Pecker's Beer Wars, and it don't exactly. matter who's bigger. <laughs> I can't stand that. I, you know, even in this network, I, I know other people who have other networks uh, that that's all they think about is, you know, they, they keep an eye on these other networks. They keep an eye on us. And I'm like, shit, keep looking, bitch. You know, well, just watch us. <laughs> that's the way I feel about it because I don't, I ain't got time to look at everybody else's network. I don't care. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so do you, uh, you do you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Wild. Sorry. Hi. I skipped no. ahead of you. <laughs> do you, do you it do matter. Uh, do you have any uh, uh, new projects uh, that you're working on for uh, uh, next year? And if, if you can, can you, uh, you know, talk about them real quick? Sure, absolutely. Um, I plan on doing quite a few events next year, and I want to try to make them at St. Albans because it's kind of an in-between for a lot of people, and it's one of the bigger locations. Um, you know, you have – it's it, St. Albans has a lot of publicity. Um, and, you know, where I live, I have to drive three hours to get to St. Albans, and it's the biggest location that I could get, you know, the people that I need out there. But um, I know probably about, I wanted to say May, but it might end up being April or even June, just depending on the timing. But I'm putting together an event currently, and it's uh, I'm going to be bringing in uh, Lee uh, Elrich. He's from... Florida. He's an underwater. He has his own team. He's an underwater paranormal investigator. He's been on the Travel Channel. He was uh, on there for doing underwater investigations. He has, his, like I said, he has his own team down there in Florida. They do underwater investigating at these old uh, shipwreck sites and everything. Very neat guy. Oh, uh, very awesome. good. 
Yes, very good theories. Uh, so my goal for this event is to make it about breaking the paranormal. And what I mean by that is I'm tired of seeing the same shit over and over and over. And these big egos come into the field and they want to come up and speak because people follow them on Facebook and they have all these, and they get like shit to say. They have nothing new to say. They're boring. I want people in there who talk about. Uh, doing ex- new experiments in the paranormal field, having new theories in the par- paranormal field, and just new shit, that, stuff that we don't hear about that often. So Lee's going to be there. Tony Filosi is from Harlan County, Kentucky. He's going to be coming in. He has a lot of geological shit that he's going to be talking about. Like, really, I've interviewed this guy. Uh, he's very interesting. Nobody knows about him, and I love it. Uh, I'm going to have Jake Fife off the network. Him and his He's just awesome. Jake Fife is, if you sit down and you listen to this kid, he's not a fucking kid. He's like an old man and like so many sold bodies, I'm telling you. I'm going to have him speaking, and I'm still putting it together. I'm still, still trying to get the date and all that settled, but it's going to be breaking the paranormal, and I'll have like, uh, you know, I'll have vendors there, have the network out there and everybody set up and stuff like that. I want to do that. I'm also wanting to start on my own documentary, and this documentary is going to be based on my healing, like the eyes of, you know, the healing through the eyes of me or whatever, uh, wherever it leads me. And of course I said, I've been working on a book. So, uh, it's hard for me cause I have ADD and I can't sit still and I have so much shit going on. I'd rather just like speak into a recorder and let it write my own damn book because I'm so lazy. I don't even want to type. Uh, <laughs> but I actually have I an idea for it. two books. <laughs> uh, my first book, I want to really, uh, go into out of body experiences and, you know, kind of talk about outside of, uh, healing, just kind of what drew me on to the to the healing path, but more of the paranormal uh, out of body experiences and stuff like that. And then the second book ideally is healing, and more ties into my documentary that I want to do, which is ba- going to be based in the Appalachian Mountains and going to be covering granny witches and women of the Appalachian Mountains, meaning granny witches and healers and stuff that has been lost in history and is not discussed anymore. And uh, talking you know showing my path um i want to be able to connect to these people and you know give people a view of my life as a healer too and not only that is but doing these uh scientific experiments uh too where people are i'm being hooked up to these machines while i'm doing this whether it be distantly or in person or both vice versa and uh yeah i want to work on that documentary and that probably will go on for the whole year and hopefully hopefully i'll be done with it this time next year and um god what else uh events events uh i want to do a one year uh anniversary event for vibe but we'll see how that goes and uh anything that falls in between there because i know uh i probably have investigations and events that i'll be attending as a uh healer and doing sessions and speaking because i've been speaking a lot lately which is something i really enjoy doing and um just this past weekend i was at st albans for pat Bussard psychic fair it was really really neat wow Um, so do you have a website people can go to and check all your stuff out um, the best way to keep up with me is Facebook. You can add me personally, uh, Holly Mullins, um, or you can go find me, uh, Intuitive Healer Holly Mullins, I think it is. Um, of course, I got so much shit. If you Google me, I'm sure you'll find me somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else, Google her pictures. Huh? <laughs> <They're hot>. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thank well, you, Holly. Rodney. No, thank you. <laughs> Damn, girl. <laughs> Is there anything that we missed that you'd like to, you know, uh, uh, add to before we uh, shut down? <laughs> oh, hell, I think we covered everything and beyond, didn't we? I think so. I, I, don't, I mean, uh, we hit you with everything we could. <laughs> and I hit you back, baby. That's what I'm good at. So, no, I think this is a good show. It was an awesome baby. show, baby. It was. It was a great show. Thank you so much, Holly, for coming on the show. I do appreciate it. Uh, and this is a thank you guys. Season. She is amazing. She is an amazing person. Oh, 
y'all are just giving me a big head right now. <laughs> Thank you guys well, so be- much for having me on. It's not too often yeah. that I get to tell my side of stuff. I'm usually interviewing people like you guys, so um, it's it's good for me. It is, well, it is good. I, loved it. I like it. I did too. I, it was a great show. I, I like when people interview me too. As a matter of fact, I'll tell y'all a little story. I was at the doctor's office there, uh, what, yesterday or the day before? Sometime this week. And uh, yes, this, this lady comes up to me and she's like, uh, you Rodney Shortridge? And I'm like, yeah, why? And she hands me a card and she's like, can I get your autograph? I'm like, for what? <laughs> oh, my she's, God. That's creepy. I mean, not creepy, but it's weird, ain't it? I've had that happen to me. It, it was weird. And then when, you know, she's sitting there and I'm like, are you serious? And she's like, yeah. So I find it. And the next thing I know, there's four other people in line with a card. <laughs> want me to sign. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, I'm nobody, people. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah you are. You're, you're, you're the big guy. For man. real, man, you are. <laughs> I, let me tell you the funniest shit. Where was uh, I was Scarefest, and Josh comes. And uh, he said, guess who I just seen on TV? And I said, who? He said, Robin. <laughs> he had, well, before he left out of West Virginia, he you called your interview. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> that was my big TV debut. <laughs> my solo. Yeah. Well, we're Josh said he, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, Josh said he was, what, he was looking at it, and he said, hey, I know her. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he might, he might be getting to see us again here soon because uh, WBBA is going to do a uh, story about us and, uh, our, you know, us doing investigations and stuff, and they're going to have it out for uh, Halloween night. So uh, I don't know when it's going to air. I don't know if it's going to be at 6 o'clock or 11 o'clock news, but as soon as I know, I'll let her know. That's awesome. That's good, guys. I'm glad you guys are doing great. And um, I'll tell you what, Black Mountain has been on the back burner for a while. And it's it's almost been like, and I, this is funny because I say it and people are laughing, and no pun intended, but it's been really dead for us as far as like residentials and stuff. But I've been working with all this other stuff, too. So I stay extremely busy with other stuff. But uh, it's always good to be busy, but sometimes it can get a little bit too much. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know that. I'm co- I, I'm not as covered up as I was, but I still kind of covered up. <laughs> yeah, right. Absolutely. Well, Holly, again, I appreciate you coming on the show. Anytime you want to come on, just give me a holler. You got anything you want to promote? Give me a holler. Well, girl, hey, door's always open. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. You can have a good night. Thanks, Love you guys. Holly. Love you, you too. Bye. 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 Well, that's it for us tonight. I want to thank Holly Mullins for coming on the show and thank everyone that took the time to listen in. I'd like to give a big shout out to the Vibe Radio Network, also to all the first responders and our men and women in the armed services. Thank you all for your service. Our guest for next Thursday night, October 27th, will be Dr. Rebecca Hassel, the pop culture professor. Uh, she is the best-selling author and editor of books that are sold in nine languages in 63 countries. Her blog on RebeccaHassel.com features essays on topics that range from, let me flip my paper over. <laughs> Numerology. Uh, oh, thank you. Numerology and uh, Twin Flames, the Pop Culture and Social Theory, and has over one million readers from all over the world. So turn in next week to another exciting show starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until then, everyone be safe and have a good night. Night, y'all.
Hi, this is Maury Moreland Morrison here to tell you Geico has more than just great savings, much more. Yes, while Geico could help you rack up more moolah faster than you can say metamorphosis, they've also been the fastest growing auto insurer for more than 10 years. That's more like it. Furthermore, Geico has fast and friendly claim service. That might seem like an oxymoron, but it's not. All the more reason to say no other auto insurer has more more than Geico. Geico, expect great savings and a whole lot more.